20 different business growth hacks uh, for around 500 pounds or just under 500 pounds that you could employ that could give your business a real boost very, very quickly. Business of Architecture UK, episode 40. Hello and welcome Architect Nation. This is the podcast for architects where you'll discover tips, strategies and secrets for running an impactful and profitable design practice. Special announcement, the next BOA UK live event, the first one of 2019 is coming to you on Tuesday the 5th of March. It will be held in the UNI offices 7A Howick Place in Victoria, South West London and there will be a discussion panel of industry thought leaders, in entrepreneurs, intrapreneurs, architects discussing the seven threats to an architectural practice. Now, early bird tickets are now on sale. I'm going to put the link and the information uh, underneath this podcast. So book your tickets right away and I look forward to seeing you there. Hello and welcome. My name is Ryan Willard and I am the host of the Business of Architecture UK and today I have the excitement of speaking with myself. So I thought it was about time that I gave a podcast and perhaps share some of the insights that I've been uh, gleaming from many of the incredible architects and entrepreneurs and business people that I've been interviewing over the last year or actually it's been about three years since we've started um, since I've started doing these types of podcasts and interestingly where this podcast comes from uh, was a few I think it was a few months ago it might have been just before Christmas Piers Taylor um, tweeted something quite interesting and was uh, was questioning the um, the use of his Reba membership and the price of a Reba membership is about £435 and was wondering whether it was worth it. Now, I'm not going to make any statements about the RIBA. I think it's a fantastic institution and it has lots of benefits as a member. So if that's something that you wish to do, um, go for it. I think it can be very, very beneficial and actually quite a good way of winning work for some of their client services. I know that uh, my friend, a lot of people who are members win work through the RBA. But the interesting point was that for £435, what else, if you weren't going to do it, what else could you use that money for? How else could you spend it? So I brainstormed a list of about 20 different business growth hacks uh, for around £500 or just under £500 that you could employ that could give your business a real boost very, very quickly, or just another way of directing those kinds of funds. So we're going to kick off, and I'm going to rattle through them, and I'm going to give a cheat sheet at the end of it so you can download that and you can use that. And if you've got any other further questions or you want me to go into depth about one one of these particular, then you know, email me, let me know, and we can we can do that. So the first bunch of them are all based around training and development. Now, Warren Buffett, I think he's quoted as saying, the best investment that you can ever make in your business is in yourself. And I really, really think that is one of the most important things that we should make lifelong commitments to learning, training, and developing ourselves. Now, £435 can get a lot of, uh, you can you can start to engage in some quite interesting things. Um, the first thing I was thinking about was you could actually hire a business mentor for a couple of sessions, or I imagine if you want a really good one, he's going to charge you five hundred pound for an hour of his time. Um, I know that there are business coaches who will charge fifty thousand pounds for a day of their time, but. Rather than seeing that as a huge expense, it's how much, how can somebody who's an expert, who knows what they're doing, has helped and coached and trained hundreds, if not thousands, of other businesses to overcome the obstacles that you are uh, facing right now, how much could that make a difference in your business? And I would assert that it could be very, very powerful. I myself have hired business coaches in the past. I've worked with Johan Taft. Um, 
And it has been by far and away some of the best money that I have ever spent. And we'll really kind of sometimes a really good business mentor will get you thinking and will help you unblock and unlock lots of the kind of internal uh, obstacles that you might be facing and have you see opportunities where you just did not think they were possible. And a lot of the people that I've interviewed over the last uh, year or so have invested heavily in their training and development, learning about business and working with other business mentors and other architects who are kind of where they want to be going. So 500 pounds can can be a great, great start in that. The next one was 500 pounds. You could probably get yourself onto a personal development weekend, which could, again, be totally life-changing. So number two, a personal development weekend. My recommendation is always the Landmark Forum. I've done that course myself a number of times. I've done lots of other courses there. But something like that, that will really alter your perception of who you are, of leadership, of communication, um, will, again, start to unlock and open up opportunities where you just did not think they were they were possible. Um, things like Tony Robbins events or there's all sorts, there's such a wide array of these types of personal development courses which you can just invest in for a weekend and you, know, you come out the next few days and that's it. You're in a new conversation with somebody totally different and bang, you've got a new job or you've got a new client or your business has taken a totally new direction. Big, big, big believer in that kind of personal training. And it's the kind of communication stuff that it's very unlikely you would have come across it at school or in any of your academic career. And it really is at the heart of every kind of business relationship, every kind of interaction, being able to understand yourself, your emotions, your communication styles, and how to sell ideas to other people, anything that helps you assist and aid in that. Big thumbs up, go for it. So number three, you could spend £435 on Audible. So Audible cost about £7.99 a month. I've got my membership. I think it's absolutely brilliant. You could buy around 400, 500 quid is going to get you about 75 books, right? Now, you could listen to those books. Now, what I do is I've trained myself to listen to these books at two times speed. So anytime I'm in my car, my car has become my library of learning. And over the last few years, um, I've probably listened to over 700 hours of business education books. And that is equivalent to a degree or more, I would say, actually, that amount of that amount of reading. It's huge. And Audible is such an easy, easy way of consuming uh, content. And if you're listening to this every single day and you're using downtime, you're using time in between meetings or the time uh, whilst you're traveling to other events, you're learning. And it only takes one idea from a book and for you to implement it effectively for, again, for you to totally change the course of your business. Again, most business leaders that I've spoken to, many of the architects that I've interviewed, all are voracious readers and have spent a lot of time particularly learning and reading business content. Now, if you want to know some great books on business content, again, I can do another cheat sheet and a list of those things So the list is, that might be another podcast in itself. Um, So, any books on business, marketing, leadership, communication, and I strongly recommend to listen to books, biogra- biographical books. Um, I started listening to books about Elon Musk or Jeff Bezos or Warren Buffett or um, even Arnold Schwarzenegger. These are really successful people. When you start just reading about the lifestyles and the commitment and the discipline of very high-performing people, you will naturally start picking up ideas and you can start implementing them in your own life. So Audible, 75 books, that's a lot of listening. It's a lot of listening. Fantastic. So number four, online education. So for about 500 quid, you can get all sorts of online courses. You can go on to um, Udemy. I've done a lot of courses on Udemy before. Um, 
people like Eben Pagan, I think are fantastic. There's Archipreneur, there's Dan Locke, who is um, sort of teaches you in high ticket, was it kind of high ticket sales? Um, Sam Ovens, another one. Robert Kiyosaki, if you haven't participated or listened to any Robert Kiyosaki books, I highly, highly recommend to buy some of those books, jump on an online course of his and have a go. Uh, and of course, the Architects Marketing Institute, which is our sort of sister company, the Business of Architecture, um, has itself a number of fantastic online courses and content which enables you to implement your own marketing strategies, um, learning from some of the world's best marketing coaches specifically for architecture. Brilliant. Go for it. There's so much stuff out there. Again, I'll leave some details about how you can jump onto some of those courses in the information here. Okay, so the next kind of, that's the sort of training and development aspects. The next sort of chunk of... uh, ideas that came were around marketing and actual little marketing strategies that you can use yourself for not that much money. So one of number five, implement a marketing strategy that promotes you, your business and architects. So I often do a hard copy monthly newsletter. And I write a little article. So my niche market is I work on a lot of super prime properties, prime properties around London, doing house renovations. And I've got a list of around 30 people who are either high net worth individuals, they're uh, very well connected people, they're influencers, they're some of them are artists, I've got neurosurgeons on the list, um, other business owners and entrepreneurs. And I make a little newsletter, it's only four sides of A4. And I send that out to 30 people and for 500 quid, you would be able to get about four months worth of, you know, 30 prints, printing copies, you know, it would take you about an hour to put together the, um, uh, the newsletter itself. And it's just a really fantastic way of keeping in contact and having a sort of referral strategy for you to grow your business. Now, this newsletter, I think hard copy absolutely brilliant because it's unusual everyone does new uh, email newsletters they you know they get just binned immediately i like to do a hard copy newsletter and actually stick a little handwritten post-it note on the on the inside of it with a special message to each of those people that i've written it to and people always give me a message back they say ryan thank you so much for receiving the newsletter let's go and have a cup of coffee or you you're just kept top of mind and out of that 30, there will be maybe five, six that become really, really good um, people who like, are always giving you referrals. And it's a, it's a very simple and effective strategy. If you, you could even do the cheap version, which is do it by email, um, but be very selective with it. Give it a go. Give it a go. There is, I think Jay Abraham's always said that there's, there is so much untapped resource and potential within a business. And most of that comes from our existing client base or our existing network. And a newsletter is a very effective and cost effective way of keeping in contact with people. So number six, have a go, spend 500 pounds, 435 pounds on Facebook ads or Google ads. And I would test out a well-crafted offer for your practice and give it a go with an online video because I think if you can use online videos, target your audience, um, it's so much more compelling, it is so much more easily consumed than uh, a written piece of advertising. And I think playing around on Facebook ads and Google ads can lead to all sorts of interesting leads. And rather than promoting your practice, I would promote an offer. Um, so like a monkey's fist offer or a promotional offer or some sort of diagnosis call or a report that you're offering. So at least you can get people into a marketing ecosystem of yours where you can be continually keeping them abreast of all the different things that you're working on. So between four and five hundred pounds, you can have a real good play and you can start to investigate how best to promote your company on either Facebook or using Google ads. 
So number seven, I like this one. This is organize a mastermind dinner with about 10 people who you admire or you want to work with. And you can do this at a relatively inexpensive but nice cafe. Um, you don't have to break the bank, but you know, 500 pounds will get you a decent meal for about 10 people or so. Um, all sorts of nice trendy places, but you can be really selective of who it is that you invite. And um, that kind of conversation, you become the center of, 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 the, of, the, of the event. It's a thing acting out of generosity. They can be some power people who might be able to give you power referrals. It can be um, highly influential people. It can be absolutely anybody. But you want to sort of think about who would be 10 people to get around a table and put on a meal and just see what comes out of the conversation, see what projects people are working on, see if that's something that you can contribute to. It's these kinds of informal, the more that you can facilitate uh, informal conversation or social interaction, you will start hearing and seeing opportunities all over the place. I know there's um, some very successful architects, I know Phil Coffey and his, um, um, and his wife, Tasman Curley, they put on some amazing dinners in their beautiful home and often becomes a really, really lovely way of meeting people in the industry, starting collaborations, um, you know, pitching ideas to potential clients or have a dinner, mastermind dinner. Number eight, number eight, of course, I would say this, but start a podcast. You can buy yourself one of these, a little Zoom hand recorder. You can get yourself a cheap microphone like that. You can get yourself some XLR cables, the ones with these on the end of it, and just go and a pair of headphones. That's all you need. You won't, you probably do that for 200 quid or something like that. And then you've got a few hundred quid left over, um, which you can spend on petrol traveling places to go and interview people. And a podcast is such a great way to produce marketing content for your company. It's a great way of developing your personal brand. It's a great way of networking. Um, and you can create a podcast around your practice. Say if you're like, for example, I do a interviews of lots of people who work on prime properties. So I often interview contractors about how they put together projects. Or I recently interviewed um, an estate agent from Knight Frank. Uh, around the kind of role that he plays in cultivating relationships with his clients. And again, it's a really, really cost-effective way of building a network. And you can be very strategic. And it's loads of fun. It is absolutely the most fun um, having a podcast and you'll start having getting an ear for it and you'll be out and about meeting with people, having conversations and you're like, this would make a great podcast, let's do it. So get yourself some kit, start a podcast so you can talk about anything. It can be design related. It can be if you're doing a passive house designers, you can talk to other experts in the industry. Um, you can talk to people who have built their own houses if you're in the self-build arena or you can talk to developers about the problems that they experience um, again there's so much scope uh, for a podcast and it really is a fantastic um, unique way for your company to express its brand and its marketing number nine join a networking organization so from around or 500 quid there's all sorts of networking groups that you could join bni i used to do bni for many years i was a chapter president there at the one in liverpool street and loved it really really loved it and you get to meet all sorts of interesting business people many of those contacts that i now that i made there i'm still i work with uh, and still getting work from them um or i've been members of property networking clubs and generally if you pay a bit of money to get involved with a, a networking group. Um, a, the caliber of people that are there tend to be better or there's more likely to be a good fit. Um, 
and you're more likely to go because that's the other thing. And the thing that I liked about BNI, for example, was that you also get trained in the discipline of networking and the way that you can structure one-on-one -on -one conversations so that you can really get to the bottom of what it is that you want from uh, from other people. And also, you get really good at listening for what people, other people are interested in uh, meeting. And so you can be a facilitator and a connector. So a networking group, £500, definitely, really, really... Uh, good idea or join a private members club I know most of them in Soho House probably around 1500 quid so it's a little bit more than the 500 pounds but you could put that 500 pounds that we're talking about towards uh, a private club membership and again you will end up meeting all sorts of interesting people at these uh, these places and often they're going to be in your sort of target demographic of clientele so again once you've you're clear on who your clientele is you can start reverse engineering well, where do these people hang out could be at the golf club could be at an aviation club private clubs all sorts of things um one of the things i'm looking at doing this year is going on a, a uh, one of these rallies that people do around parts of europe on uh, in 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 sort of luxury supercars and all that kind of stuff. Because there, if you think about it, you've got um, 20 people who you will become very, very close with and you're doing something really, really interesting. And those people, if they're involved in that kind of activity, are often going to be, they could be, I don't know who your clients are, again, but that could be a great way of building those relationships and building your own network. Number 10. So with the RIBA, we all know that you get your red plaque. Now that's something that all architects or well, some point often will aspire to having and you put it outside on the building hoarding. So that's what you get with the, with the RIBA. Um, if you've got a few hundred quid, four or five hundred pounds, you could actually design your own plaque. And rather than have just your name and a phone number on it, you can have directions to either a downloadable report on that plaque or some other kind of monkey's fist offer. Again, people, all they've got to do is walk past it, walk past your site, take a photograph of it, and, you know, if you can put, like, a QR code on the, on the hoarding, and they get immediately put into your marketing ecosystem so that you can continually keep in contact with these people and generate leads like that and that's a relatively inexpensive um, activity and you could get a number of those boards printed up and you could design it yourself or pay for a graphic designer to do a nice hoarding for you. Uh, number 11, well this is quite an interesting one, um, take four of your best clients out to separate dinners and thank them for being great and actually ask them over dinner for a referral. So. That can be a really, really great way. So we were just talking about a mastermind dinner, but this is like a one-on-one -on -one dinner. You know, you've got a fantastic client, your best client, and you want to work with more people like that. Take them out for a dinner. Take them out, have a meal with them. It's all on you. Um, or you could take a group of them out, or you could take a number of them out, and just be very direct and say, like, you know, I really have loved working with you, and I'm really keen to work and help and support other excellent clients of your caliber to help them renovate their homes or whatever type of work it is. Do you know of any kind of people that would be able to, uh, that, would, that would benefit from working with us? Would you be able to introduce me to them? Boom. There you go. It's a great, great way of growing your business very, very quickly. Number 12, very similar, but this is referrals from other architects so have a meet up with other architects have a, uh, a like a sort of joint practice night out or organize again a dinner dinner a dinner or a drinks or anything like that um i've often spoken to architects who are maybe a few more runs above me if you like in their in their growth and their development and often projects that are too small for them can be great fodder for, for me. Um, and that's, that's worked out quite well. I remember when I first started my practice, I was in, 
I was work. I shared a studio space with a couple of our architects, and they were getting projects that were too small for them. I was right in there with them. They get passed down to me. Bang, and you're away. Easy, great way. Other architects are a superb source of projects. I've heard this from architects again and again and again and again, and I really think it's one of the most sort of important aspects of any sorts of uh, marketing is that we are we're beginning to work as a team. Um, with each other. So, number 13 is experiment with some marketing ideas. Um, I haven't tried this one myself, but I recently got a, uh, a new car, which isn't so embarrassing to look at, and I'm going to make a little magnet, a stylish magnet, which I can put on the, on, on the outside of it, so it's not permanent, but it just becomes a promotional offer uh, which I can have on the car when I'm, particularly when I'm in desirable locations in West London and Belgravia and places like that. Um, one of those magnets doesn't cost much, they cost about 100 quid, you can design it yourself and again put an offer on the side of it, pointing towards a monkey's fist, pointing towards a downloadable report. Um, and again, it's a, a great way of getting people into your marketing ecosystem. So I'm going to try that one out and I'm going to let you know how we get on with it. Number 14. So this is quite a useful one, particularly if you're a residential practice, but you could probably do a leafleting campaign where you've got 5,000 to 6,000 leaflets. You can hire a delivery company to target specific um, postcodes in an area and again I'd be promoting not the practice but I'd be promoting another offer which was relevant to people who were thinking about engaging work and doing renovations to a house and you want to be thinking about headlines like I mean I often use headlines like 10 mistakes that people make when renovating a prime property in London it's useful it's of value and you're giving it away first and you become part of an education rather than you just saying here I'm an architect come look at me you're giving out value first and a leafleting campaign which is targeted you've got your specific postcodes you know where you're going you don't have to do any leafleting yourself um, though I've done that before I've been out on the streets leafleting and you'd be surprised because you do meet interesting people it's probably not the best use of your time but you can hire out these types of companies that actually do it for you and it's great so for four or five hundred pounds, you could probably repeat that in the same area maybe a few times, so maybe three or four times, um, and see what happens. Let me know. I want to hear people implementing some of these ideas and seeing how successful they're being. Um, PR. Get a bit of PR. Hire a PR consultant for um, you know, half a day's work for 500 quid. Um, or this is, a, this is a really interesting one. So... I've got some friends who are actors and who are very good at getting themselves into publications. And I remember one friend of mine, what she did was she hired a photographer and did a fantastic, beautiful shoot, um, spent quite a bit of money doing that, but then crafted a story and took the pictures and the story or the sort of a kind of uh, like a, almost like a press release to certain journalists in very high-end magazines that they were looking to get featured in and was able to get themselves published. And a calling card like that sometimes can be worth its weight in gold. It's, I mean, it, it, it can be absolutely fantastic. Or just working with a skilled uh, PR expert, someone like Rob Fien who's been on the show a few times, um, Speaking with someone like that about a strategy and getting your name out there can very quickly get you into the right places. So, number 16. So these, are, we're starting to move on now into kind of other business investments. Um, and these were just some sort of ideas that I was playing around with. But four or 500 pounds, why not just give it to a member, of a member of staff, use it as a bonus, or just use it to acknowledge somebody in your team for great work. Or I remember one of the practices I used to work at, um, 
they used to give out free memberships to things like the Tate or the Barbican. And it's, you know, 50 quid for a, for a membership and you could give 10 of them out to your staff. And they're just really, really nice gifts to that create goodwill. I used to go to the Tate all the time and every time I would go, I'd just be like, thank you. Thank you to my employer. It just made me feel great that someone cared. Um, and so that's a nice, these are kind of nice ways to kind of internally invest and create goodwill and just create great company culture, which can pay itself back just infinitesimally. It can be such a reward. Um, number 17. So we were talking about newsletters that can go externally to sort of uh, you know, referral partners, but you can create an internal newsletter for your staff. Um, and communicating your values, communicating your successes, acknowledging great work. Um, and that can really encourage opportunities for staff. You can, you can, you can play games. You can encourage the staff to, um, you know, if you, if you bring in a client, you can get X percent of the, of the profit if you're bringing in, bringing in new work, particularly for a small practice, um, you know, that can, be, that can be a real great incentive to start, you know, well, actually, why not? Why can't I bring a project into the practice? Um, and you start getting people who are working for you thinking like, thinking entrepreneurially. Um, number 17. Number 18, rather. Four or five hundred pounds will get you a subscription to a trade magazine for another industry. Now, there's a fantastic book called Networking with the Affluent by a guy called uh, Thomas Stanley. And he talks about becoming an expert in listening uh, uh, about the industries, of different industries to your own. So as an architect, if you were working on, I don't know, surgeries, for an example, that you become, you get a subscription, a trade subscription to one of these magazines about doctor's surgeries or whatever it is and you start paying attention to who are the movers and shakers in that industry who what are the major things that people are dealing with in those types of industries and how can your architectural services provide benefit and be dealing with some of those pain points so just investing the money to learn about one of your target industries can be very very useful particularly if you're doing public housing or anything like that that can be a very, very worthwhile um, subscription. Number 19, pay your work experience student. Get a work experience student, give them 400, 500 pound at the end of the week. They're going to love it. They're going to come back and they are going to end up talking about how amazing it was to be an architect. And just, I think that's, that's, that's it would be quite fun. I want, let me know if you do that one. I'd like to see what that happens and, uh, and what that's like for a work experience student to get paid at the end of their, uh, their time with you. And number 20, the final one, probably the most important thing you could ever do with a few hundred quid um, and is always, always worth it and will increase your productivity almost instantaneously is take a break. Four or five hundred pounds, you can get a cheap flight somewhere in Europe, you can go somewhere inspiring, you can take a road trip, you can put yourself into a spa, um, somewhere you just go peace, quiet, unplug totally, have a great weekend or few days off and enjoy. That is, I hear that again and again and again from business mentors that most entrepreneurs, business owners suffer from some kind of burnout, some kind of exhaustion, and it's affecting every aspect of their life. So if all else fails, take a holiday. So thank you very much. That's, I'm going to leave the details of all of those ideas in a cheat sheet for you. Thank you for listening, and we'll talk again very soon. Thank you for listening. Now, don't forget, early bird tickets are now on sale for the next BOA UK live event, which is the seven threats to an architectural practice happening Tuesday, 5th of March, 2019. Book your tickets now. The views expressed on this show by my guests do not represent those of the host, and I make no representation, promise, guarantee, pledge, warranty, contract bond, or commitment, except to help you 
be unstoppable.